going on everyone? It's Jamie here from Shopify Masterclass and today we'll be taking a look at your essential setup, your pre-launch and your go live checklist. These are all points you want to be considering before you launch your Shopify store. We've set this up in a really easy to read and use checklist. You can make sure that your store is working properly and it's optimized for generating sales right out of the gate here. Especially if you're paying for ads out of the gate too, you want to make sure that customers can actually purchase your product and they feel comfortable doing so. So make sure you stay to the end of the video here as we're going to go over each point in detail on this checklist so you can make sure you have a smooth and successful launch. If you're enjoying any of the content along the way, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below as that really helps the channel out. And I want to mention our sponsor, ProfitCalc, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. It's going to allow you to skip those spreadsheets and get back to growing your business. And it comes with a 15-day free trial. And there's a link in description below. I'm also going to show a quick video detailing their full feature set. Are you a Shopify business owner who spends hours doing your accounting? Have messy spreadsheets kept you from growing your business? Discover ProfitCalc. The affordable and easy to set up Shopify app that crunches your numbers in just one click. It automatically syncs with all your accounts and expenses to calculate your profit, displaying everything in an easy to read dashboard so you understand your business in real time. Start for free on the Shopify app store today. All right, so let's dive into our checklist today. There's 19 points here and we'll go over them one by one. They're split up into several categories as well. We have general, page audits, other analytics, and essential app. So let's dive into the general section first. And the first one's gonna be quick and easy. It's, do you have a custom domain name for your Shopify store? When you originally set up your Shopify store, you're gonna get a .myshopify.com domain name. And that's something you don't wanna keep when your store goes live. And it's gonna make your store look like a beginner store is it really generating orders? It's also not going to be good for SEO purposes. So you want to make sure you're changing that by buying your own domain name, either through Shopify or a different domain provider. It should only be around 10 to $15 for the year. So it's definitely something you should do. The next one is, are your payment settings enabled? If you're in your Shopify store, you want to head down to settings on the bottom left, then go to payments. And you want to make sure you have set this up correctly, whether you're using PayPal, Shopify payments, or anything along those lines, you wanna make sure that this is set up correctly as this is how you're gonna collect money from your customers and how you're gonna actually fulfill those orders. So you wanna make sure that, that is set up correctly so you can actually start making some money here. Next one's gonna to be to verify your tax information. You wanna make sure this is set up out of the gate. And again, this is gonna be in your settings on the left-hand side for taxes and duties as taxes are something you don't wanna ignore. You wanna make sure that you're charging the customers the correct tax or you're gonna be on the hook for them at the end of the day. You wanna make sure this is filled correctly so you're charging the right taxes to your customers, especially if you're in the EU as well and you're using VAT, which has its own processes on top of it in terms of how you set up your product pricing and how the taxes are charged. The last general tip here is just to me to remove your password protection. As before your Shopify store is live, you have the option to set a password here. If you have this set up, you want to make sure it's removed as a customer cannot complete the checkout if your password protection is turned on. And then you're going to get a notification screen such as this saying to join the waitlist. To turn that off, you just want to head to online store on the left, preferences, and then scroll down here to the restrict store access option and make sure this isn't enabled so customers can actually view your products and check out. Next section is going to be page audits. You want to make sure you're going through each page of your website for things such as spelling hours, image formatting, block formatting. You want to be going through each of your pages, making sure they look correct. And so for page audits, you've written the crucial pages you want to make sure that are optimized. And these are pages you want to go through and loading yourself, preferably in something such as an incognito browser. You can test different browsers as well as they sometimes give you different views. You also want to make sure you're looking at things from a mobile lens. And so you can load that through your phone as you want to be seeing what customers are seeing to make sure there aren't any errors that you're missing. I know I've done the same. I typically use Chrome on a larger desktop monitor. And so sometimes I do miss errors if I'm not checking the mobile as the formatting can change quite drastically. So you wanna make sure that you're testing on all different devices as well. So in terms of the pages to audit, you have your home page, the page that the customer is gonna see when they first load your domain. You have your collection pages, your product pages, your utility pages to consider. So it's gonna be your FAQ page, your contact us page, your about us page, and your shipping rates page. If you don't have them, you should have them as those are utility pages that customers expect to see as they are listed on most Shopify websites. You also wanna make sure that your legal pages are set up. So this is your terms and conditions and privacy policy. Shopify is gonna have templates that they can generate for you to generate a lot of that legalese to cover most of your options. The way to access that there is go to your Shopify store, hit settings in the bottom left, go down to policies here. Once that loads, you're gonna see different policies 
So not only terms of service, you can have shipping policy, you can have a refund policy, as well as a contact information policy. This is required if your website, if you're selling into the European Union. So we've updated the checklist right there to make sure we cover all this. There are gonna be templates that are very easy to create just by clicking the create from template button. And that's gonna pre-populate with information from your store already making it quite easy. Lastly, there's the add to cart page. So you wanna make sure that this is looking good and efficient. Most themes have this already pre-built to be effective, but you just wanna make sure that you're auditing that one as well. Next, let's move into the other section. So the first one is that you want your speed to be under three seconds. And so the way you're gonna determine that is you're gonna head to a site such as GT Metrics. This one is my preferred speed testing site as it gives you quite detailed breakdowns. You wanna enter the URL to test here. So I have my testing develop Shopify store. Then you wanna hit test your site. And from there, it's gonna load really detailed metrics on things such as your speed. It's also gonna give you optimization options and hints here on what you can do to speed up your website. Now there are quite a few things that you can edit as those are done by Shopify, but there are certain things such as optimizing your images, making sure you don't have a lot of extra apps loading. And these two things here can make a big difference in how fast your Shopify store is. You can see now that it's loaded, it has a grade of A here, and it's loading quite quickly at the two second mark for the fully loaded time. I'm gonna show you other details such as time to interactive, largest contentful paint, and the on load time. There's also the waterfall structure showing you what things are loaded in what order. So I can see this JPEG here is slowing things down a lot. So maybe I wanna compress it a little more or possibly not load it. So the next one is gonna be order, checkout, tested and working. So you wanna make sure you're creating a test order going through the process of ordering something from end to end. You don't want the customer finding an error here. So you wanna make sure that things are going smoothly for you. And this is gonna make it easy for you to confirm that your payment settings are set up correctly. And so Shopify does have a built-in way to place a test order order as well if you don't actually want to pay money for your store as you're going to lose out on those transaction fees you simply want to encourage placing a test order in the shopify docs here it's going to take a few steps but it's going to make it really easy here to test things out they are also help with things such as your email notifications as you can ensure that those are coming out successfully and being sent and formatted correctly. Next is gonna be an easy one and that's ensuring that your favicon is added. If you're not sure what a favicon is, it's gonna be that little icon that shows up in the tab bar of your browser. So you wanna make sure this is set up as it's gonna make it easy for the customers to find out which tab your site is on. Some people do have quite a few tabs open at once and so they can, this can make it much easier to find out your store again. You wanna make sure that's set up and it just makes your site look a little more professional. The next one's gonna be two-factor authentication. We all know that people tend to generate weak passwords here. So you wanna make sure that no one is guessing the password to your Shopify store that you spent so much time to set up. That's a really easy one. And then just more for security purposes for your own backend. The next one's gonna be email notifications. You wanna make sure that they're working and functioning as expected. And so if you're in the settings section of Shopify, you wanna hit notifications on the left. You wanna make sure this is customized for the look and feel that you're looking for. You can have some basic settings if you're not using an email app. That's gonna allow you to change the accent color as well as the logo as well to make it match your Shopify store better. There's quite a few notifications that you can customize, things such as the order invoice, an order has been refunded, the gift card has been created, shipping confirmation, quite a few ones here. And there are particular apps available on the Shopify app store that give you more customization on these options as well, if that's something you're looking for. Next, let's dive into analytics. You wanna make sure that your tags and pixels here are set up so you can start tracking the customers that come to your website so you can retarget them for later. One of your most profitable audiences in any PPC platform is gonna be your retargeting audience. So these are people who either viewed your products, viewed your site overall, added something to cart or purchased a product. Making sure you have these pixels and tags set up from the get-go is going to ensure that you can start targeting them again. For many of these as well, you need a minimum audience size. So it's best to have this set up as soon as possible. And so you have different ones. You have your Facebook pixel, your Google analytics tag. These are kind of the two minimum requirement ones. And depending on the ad platform you're using, you can use TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, Twitter. They all have retargeting options. You can add those tags to your site. Shopify makes it really easy to add the first two of those. If you're in your online store, hit preferences, scroll down, you can see your Google analytics tag and your Facebook pixel. And those two can be added directly from the Shopify backend. So those are things you should definitely be setting up. Lastly, let's look at some essential apps here. There's gonna be essential apps on your Shopify store that are gonna help for marketing purposes. So the first one's gonna be an email SMS collection. You wanna make sure that you're collecting customer email addresses as they visit your website. This could be done with a pop-up to say, hey, get 10% off if you give us your email so we can contact you later. These are great because remarketing is expensive in email or SMS as well, or very free or cheap ways to reach your customers in a more one-to-one -one manner. So with email as well, a lot of these apps, I customize it possibly based on what they purchased or the products they viewed here. They can make it really enticing and easy for you to collect customer information. This can be with the customer's consent, of course. 
we're going to make it really easy to tie into the third app listed here, and that's the abandoned cart app. So it's going to make it easy to message customers if they've added something to their cart. Many customers are online. They might be on their phone, or maybe they get distracted during the purchase of a product, or they're adding something to their cart as they might want to buy it later. Using an add to cart app can make it really easy to target said customers and send them a reminder email maybe a discount email to help entice them to come finish their purchase and buy your product. And many of these apps have great statistics here in terms of how many customers they're able to reconvert after they've abandoned their cart. The second one is gonna be a review app. You wanna make sure you're collecting reviews from the get-go as well, as reviews are gonna provide social proof for your Shopify store and show customers that, hey, this site is legit. I actually received my products. Here's what it's looked like. Here's what I think of the brand. And here's how my experience went. If you're drop shipping through something like AliExpress, there are also plenty of apps that allow you to import reviews from AliExpress itself so you can leverage existing reviews to bolster the appearance of your Shopify store. Lastly, you want to have an email flow app. This is going to allow you to customize the sequence of emails received. Many email collection apps have this built in or they integrate directly with an email flow app. Let's you create sequences such as an onboarding sequence. Let's say a customer email is collected. You can send them emails based on certain conditions. You can say, hey, after 24 hours, send them a discount code. Maybe after a week, send them new product information, and you can set these up to run automatically. So there's no extra intervention on your end. You can also do a post-purchase upsell sequence, maybe two days after they receive an order. You send them an email explaining the shipping process, what the unboxing experience is gonna look like. Maybe two weeks later, you ask them how their product was received and if they enjoyed it, then you can kind of incentivize for a review. Then maybe 30, 60 days down the line, you're showing them more products that they could buy, upselling them on further options there which can help generate more revenue. And if you look at the profit formula, the frequency of purchase is a key factor there. And having an email flow up can help trigger that. So overall, this concludes the video on the launch checklist. If you're interested in downloading the checklist, just let me know in the comments here. We can make that available. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it so much if you hit that like and subscribe button below as that really helps the channel out. Lastly, I want to mention our sponsor, ProfitCalc, the one-click profit calculator app available on the Shopify app store. And there's a link in the description below to access a 15-day free trial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video.